What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fath and Man Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through today's Friday baseball slate. Sheets, a lot of DFS stuff going on lately, a lot of craziness, and yet you go out there and, and you win the weird baseball slate that I barely knew existed. Well, uh, that's that's what you got to do, man. You got to be stealth. I mean, I listen, everybody everybody was 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 analyzing Isaiah McKenzie like all night long last night and and, and figuring and, and and figuring out that that Allen Robinson was the big pivot off of Cooper Cup, but it turns out it's probably the opposite. Um <laughs> And uh, and I was just still grinding my baseball and my uh, League of Legends and you know <laughs> and doing and doing whatever's and uh, we took down the three thirty three which you know obviously I had the one just one entry in that and uh, leaving five thousand on the table in the process um, you know it's it's interesting you know first I want I don't want to whine I have it's not whining because I actually am kind of mad at myself you know there's a new site which um, I don't know if it's a new site but it's at least a couple months old. I just signed up for it yesterday. It's a site that actually analyzes the um, the uh, the lineups for for dupes and stuff like that. Like after the tournament starts, so mm-hmm. you can see how many of your lineups were duped zero times, one time, two times, whatever it is. I'll give you the link to whatever. Yeah, it's like free for a week. And you know, I played fifty lineups in that um, in the uh, in the showdown slate last night, and I set like a. a, a a hard cap of 49 one on my salary as well. And of my 50 lineups, literally zero of them were unique. So, so I, I, I need to revisit, you know what I mean? Like I need to think about what I'm doing um, as far if I'm going to play this, like the showdown, the lottery thing, you know what I mean? I'd like to have some unique lineups. I was looking at what's his name, uh, JSU Rab or whatever. And they made a big deal that he played like 150 lineups and a hundred of them were totally unique. And I don't know what, what he had or whatever it is. But like I, I got, I got to think about how to how to how to deal with uh, how to deal with that because all I did was basically put my projections and whatever into Saber Sim, and I did what I thought was a decent job of, of 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 being different or whatever. But it turns out I guess I just wasn't. You know, I, I don't. I have to kind of analyze that a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah. It doesn't happen very often. I mean, only on three game slates and stuff. I I just I've I've no, no that was that was that was the showdown slate. Oh, the showdown last night. I'm so sorry. Oh. Yeah. 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 I was like, wait a minute. Well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, yeah. I mean, I didn't do very well last night either, but I, I would like to take a look at this thing that you're talking about because I, th- I think it would be, uh, it'd be cool. Yeah. But walk, walk us uh, through real quick before we jump in the slate. Yeah. But just for the fun. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk through the head of baseball slate from yesterday. Um, and, uh, it, it uh, and honestly, like there were three games and, and none of them were particularly lockish. I mean, you had the Yankees against Minnesota, that was Sonny. I'll just remember because you didn't play. It was like it was Sonny Gray against Cortez. Um, the, the the two real chalk pitchers were 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 what's his name? Was the guys I had was was Dylan Cease, who was like a hundred percent owned against Oakland, mm-hmm. and Kirk Gibson was in was a fifty seven hundred dollar value at home against Miami, right? right? So I played him, and then I just basically played some stacks or whatever, and Gibson scored one fantasy point. Right. Um, and Cease, it didn't matter. He actually he, he did well, but everybody owned him, so it didn't matter. And the White Sox just went went off. Um, and I did have, and this is you know not always what you have to do, but on a three out of five game three game slate, you get one team that's worth fourteen runs. I had I had a five man stack, yep, including you know Romy Gonzalez who scored thirty three fantasy points with thir- at only thirteen percent owned. You had Moncada had two home runs. That doesn't happen all that often. Right? Yep. 47 fantasy points and this uh and had a one percent Celestino scored five points. But what's what's interesting about it is look, I had Aaron Judge with 70, I 77 on Aaron Judge. And for a three-game slate, this isn't particularly that's pretty unusual. unusual. That's pretty I mean that's off the board enough, but you're I right. Guess so. you, have hit, you have to hit all of it because but, but it's but but, it's, but, it's but, the, but the point of it is is that is that no is that I'm the only one that was leaving this kind of money on the table. Okay. Right. And and I did like, there's cap space zero, cap space two hundred, cap space whatever, and I made no intent to do that. I just really put my projections in, ran saber sim builds, and looked at it. And I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I honestly didn't even realize that I left the money on the table until like well after the slate started, right? right. And I, the, the, you know, I just went okay, whatever. And then I'm like, wow, I guess it, so. So it's one of those things where if I had gotten too cute and looked at, it, I'm like, boy, I don't want to leave five thousand on the table. I would have probably set like a, I would have gotten scared. I would have said, okay, make it at least a minimum of forty eight thousand, maybe, 
you know, yeah. 48, five. And this just wouldn't have happened. And this was pretty, you know, I have to tell you after those, you know, after I guess it was one of the second home runs of Moncada, this was actually not even as close as it seems like, like this guy, I was like 10 points ahead of this, of like everybody, like, like most of the time. And yeah. this guy made it close at the end. Like uh, Seth Brown was his one, like guy that had a shot. He got it. It's really funny. He got a double and didn't score the run from first. If the guy from first scored, he would have gotten the RBI and then he would have beat me. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so yeah, I'm real, really happy about it. And, and listen, football is the biggest sport. It's the biggest deal. Everybody's trying to win the million dollars or whatever it is. But I promise you that, that, that during football season, these types of slates and all these other sports is, are just going to get, I don't want to say ignored, but they're just not going to get the same amount of, 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 of analysis. And I'll tell you this, like a slate like this on a stupid freaking Thursday up against the freaking NFL opening day, especially a three game slate. Half the people didn't even know the slate existed. Okay. Not to mention the fact that, that, that DraftKings didn't even call this the main slate, right? They called right. the three, the three game 1 PM, the main slate, even though, pretty much pay the same amount, you know, whatever it is. Right. So I mean, listen, I, I don't, you know, and, and, and I've, I've done very well with these types of things. And I guess it's because I don't, I, I kind of look at these things more like puzzles and not trying to find the thing that pays the most that I get into these things more than some of the other good players do. So um, I do see uh, I, I, just the names are different, like in this tournament, right. You right, don't right. see I, the same I, names, you know, totally nobody wants you, to man. Play it, you know, so yeah. uh so yeah, so obviously that's good. Builds me a nice little cushion for the uh, going into the weekend, you know, and 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 uh, and uh, I'm ready to uh, ready to get after a big, much bigger slate that's going to yeah, be competing for a little a bit harder example. today. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, dude, that's great. I, that, I'm really yeah. impressed. It's great. But then let's uh, we'll, we'll jump into tonight's slate because this is going to be a this is going to be a big one. Um, and it's it should be very spread out from what I'm seeing early on. Are you sort of totally seeing agree? Yeah. yeah. Um, which I which I love. I love that stuff where we can just do what we want and not have to put as much emphasis on ownership. Yeah. Although it may play in a little bit, not going to be a major as much of a factor as it usually is in baseball on a day on slates like this. Yeah. Um, all right. So what do you got first here? We got Boston and Baltimore. Um, this is a game where I feel like I would have been a much higher uh, projection projected total earlier in the season. I don't know. Are we for sure that it's Bello? That's what I have now. I have a you know, okay. projected I'll as Bella. I mean, I've been projected it. starter as Bella. Although I will say that I don't right now have a projection. Oh, yes, I do. Actually, I do have a projection on him. So, yeah, I have Bella. Yeah, this feels like a game that I have no problem if you want to stack the Orioles. And I have really little interest. I mean, Look, I I I know Bellow is really talented, so I I guess you could make an argument for him here. I, I just think on this slate I wouldn't do it. The, my highest interest level in this game is is the Orioles, um, and they're just uh, sort of a side side interest, and they're 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 kind of expensive now. Uh, you do have like some guys at the bottom who are a little cheaper, but I I think the Orioles are are a viable stack. But I don't feel like I'm overwhelmingly excited to play any of this personally. Yeah, I have just as a preview, I have eight stacks total that I'm interested in, and like seven pitchers and, and, and I don't, and I, I don't think uh, I neither the pitchers show up for me here. I do have actually Boston listed as a, uh, as a team that I have interest in. So uh, I will throw, I will throw that into the mix and they don't have, you know, they're not my top player or anything like that, but I definitely have them as, as, as viable. Um, um, I don't know if you, you thought about that at all, but aside from that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, you can make the same argument. I think, I mean, Baltimore's a better offensive team than Boston is. Um, Boston doesn't hit nearly as well on the road. This is not an, a Boston's top lineup. That's why I'm more interested in the Orioles side personally. But I have no problem. I mean, you can make an argument for it. So I, I could see Boston. I just don't see any. I'm certainly not excited about it. Uh, this is a, it's a softer lineup. It's been probably a lot worse than people think, especially on the road this season. Um, that's why their run total is so low today, but. I mean, I would, I would look at, I don't know who's, who's supposed to start. Cause I just had the normal guys. So I had Verdugo, Martinez, well, Devers. They're, they're, it's one of those things, you know, in baseball, like do they keep starting them? I mean, they're, they're playing for nothing. Um, they're not, they're not good. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it, I'm talking about, they've got, so the bottom of the lineup really, it's, it's more Cassis and McGuire who are the horrible spots. Kike has been terrible this season. Um, 
JD has been pretty, I mean, he just hasn't had any power all season until recently. Um, you're paying up for guys who really are just theoretically good hitters. Like JD Martinez is 4,900. He's hit nine home runs and 370 at bats against the righties this season. That is <laughs> nothing you should be like excited about. Right. Look, Xander Bogarts is, is 5,500. He's hit nine home runs and 430 at bats this year against righties. So the only guy that really, you know, stands out that you would get excited about would be Devers. Um, he's the only one who's really got the power. It's just, it's just the lineup hasn't gotten there. Could it happen tonight? Sure. Um, I just, I would rather take a shot with Baltimore who actually has shown that they can put up some numbers and I like some of these kids they've got. So that's just my argument against Boston. I'm always a little down on Boston when they're on the road. So I always do that. Washington, Philly, uh, Syndergaard and Corbin. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, I have no idea what's going on today with, with these the the projected scores here I, I i don't understand why corbett why philadelphia only has a 4.4 run total i really am confused by it um i don't think i've seen corbin almost pitch all season long is it let me double check the weather here or something 77 it's not like great but it's not terrible i, I i'm seeing between a 4.7 and a five run total between a couple different lines i, I would have thought this would be five and a half maybe even like up to six against philly uh, i love philly tonight uh, I think that that's one of the better stacks on the slate. And uh, I have no idea why the ownership project runs. I know they're, they're expensive. So maybe that's why the ownership but is, is there, but I I'm very high on Philly. And I think you could take pieces if you wanted to from Washington. Um, I probably am going to avoid pitchers. How about you? Yeah, I like, um, I like both uh, both sides of the hitting in this game as well. Um, you didn't mention Washington as much as you said, just pieces. But, yeah, I agree with you. I do think that Philly is one of the better uh, stacks on the board. Um, I have them as certainly one of my eight. I, I, as a matter of fact, I have them just as <laughs> – you want to know the truth? I have them just as good as in Arizona um, at low ownership. So, I guess, I guess overall, I probably would have them as my – I guess my top stack, you want to know the truth. Um, yeah. Uh, but I also do have Washington as kind of a, uh, kind of a, 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 like you said, a kind of a value, more of a value piece. So it's going to be more, more pieces and stuff. I have them pretty, pretty low owned. They put up a freaking big game yesterday, which I usually don't like, but I mean, but they put up 14 runs. It is good to see when you're they playing the value teams, team. it's good to see. You know? mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, what is just Luke Voigt, uh, the, the set, the, the center, the, the catcher I like sometimes, uh, and Hernandez, you know, he's not going to hit any home runs, but he's always seemed to be on the base paths. You know what I mean? Um, for stacks, if you if you want to do something like that, so I like uh, I like both sides of this game. Do you have any uh, umpire data on this game yet? Not yet. I, okay. I can double check later. But I do want to point out, and and look, I'm just pointing it out. I don't actually think anything has changed based on two games. First of all, the last time they played each other, I believe Patrick Corbin didn't record an an out. Um, he 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 gave up. I believe six runs without recording an out in the, in the last time these two teams faced each other. Is that right? I think that's right. Um, might've been more runs than that. Actually. He doesn't record. He doesn't record a lot of outs. No, he, he doesn't. But, uh, but I'll tell you one thing that's weird is that he has been really good the last two times out. It's true. Um, but I, I'm not taking that to mean anything. I, I just think that we shouldn't assume that a guy who has done this test for now three years in a row, uh, basically since, well, anyway, I don't want to get into all that. But uh, he, I mean, he's kind of getting away with with murder a little bit in some of these games when he does get away with it, and he's not getting away with it plenty of the time. He's got, I believe, the highest ERA of any qualified player, and he's for the second season in a row, if, that, if I'm not mistaken. When, when um, was the last time most power too? When was the last time a pitcher had twenty losses? He's six and seventeen right now. He's really playing playing not to get the twenty. Um, yeah, that, I don't know. I, I'd have to say. Not in a long time. You know, it might have been. It might have been when one. I don't remember. It wasn't Scherzer or Verlander, but one. Of, they had that whole young group in for the Tigers, and I remember a couple of them might have had twenty losses one season right before they got really good. We'll research that. Um, I'll take a look at that one. But but I but look, yeah, Philadelphia just seems like a really really good stack today, and I'm I can't really buy these early that they they can't be owned on this slate. And I like what you said about Washington. Washington's just so cheap; it's hard not to have a little bit of interest. And I would try and play any of the guys who could steal bases, whoever ends up in the lineup for Washington today against Syndergaard, just because just basically like a free base, um, a free stolen base. <clears throat> Tampa Bay, New York. Cheats, why don't you talk about this one? Anything, Any what, what are you interested in here, if anything at all? 
So I was one of the unfortunate uh, people who faded Montas in his last start against Tampa. Um, he was a hundred percent. He was, a, it was a short slate, but he was really, really high owned. Uh, I had just not seen enough from him to have to play him. And I didn't play him and he completely smashed um, yeah. in five innings, um, seven strikeouts, zero walks, one hit. And he's right back against the same team. Um, so I'm probably not going to play him again. <laughs> that's, that's the way it's just going to be. Um, I like, uh, I do like the Yankees a little bit um, in, uh, I mean, they're not, they're probably the eighth team I came up with today, but they are the eighth and they, they made it in there. So I do kind of like the Yankees. I don't know exactly know who's pitching. So, so, oh, they do have well, Drew Rasmus. Rasmus pitches, I mean, he's pretty good. Yeah, I know. I was looking. So he was on the paternity suit. He's paternity suit. I shouldn't say the paternity <laughs> list. Sorry about that. He was on the paternity list. So you can play the uh, narrative, the, the no sleep narrative. Nah, I guess not. Um, so uh, I like the Yankees maybe a little bit, but maybe not. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a stubborn mule. I'm not gonna. I'm probably not gonna play much. I'll tell you what, Tam. I just I, I I always gush over Tampa, and it's really easy to because they do everything. They lose everybody. They always, and then they just turn all these guys into studs. You know what I mean? And and Rasmussen is making his leap into that that full on stud range. Um, I, I don't think anything's obvious in this game, and I don't think that it looks like a great spot. But a low owned Yankee stack is certainly interesting. Um, you're gonna have some cheap options because they're gonna. It's kind of a watered down lineup that they've got going. But you know, getting Trevino who might be batting fifth today. Glaber cleanup only at four K. Aaron Hicks, you know, projected to lead off at two point two. Uh, you could do it cheaply, but I'm not probably going to go there. Okay, so I have some I have some information. Okay. So pitchers with 20 lost seasons. This is actually pretty amazing. This is why Bobby's the best, right? So there was one guy 20 years ago, right, who had 20 losses, and I'll tell you who it is in a minute. And before that, it was 20 years before that, and then after that, there were like a zillion people did it, like the '70s, right? right. So every, everybody did it in the '70s. Can I right? guess who but, one of them was? Right, but after, but after the '70s, like like Brian King was 1980. It was 20 years from then until the last one, which was 2023, and not since. Was it Rick Porcello? No, no. It's the, it, but you had the team right when you were talking about it. Tigers it was on the Tigers. His name was Mike Maroth. Mike Maroth, yeah. So they had, and they were. He was coming up in the same group with the with the Verlanders and the Scherzers. And okay. Everything. Okay. They had all that talent. He was supposed to be one of them, so they just let him really pitch it out. And their whole thing was, we're going to let you guys throw like 110 pitches every game. And yeah, he pitched 193 pitches uh, in that that season. <laughs> uh, gave up the yeah. So uh, that's interesting. Was, yeah. So the, it was so 20 years since, and Patrick Corbin is knocking on the door. He's right there, and he's doing <laughs> it the wrong way. At least that, those guys were young. Yeah, yeah. I had no excuse for Corbin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, all right, you ready to jump over to Toronto, Texas? Yeah. All right, um, we, go ahead. I was gonna say I don't have a lot. Um, I have like Toronto as maybe a sixth best stack for me. Although I don't like to, I don't like to usually go after uh, Dunning. But last time I said that, I did. I, I have these. It's so funny. Maybe that's why I win sometimes. I sometimes have these terrible takes, and then just sometimes they work out. And sometimes just they don't. <laughs> like, it, like the last, like oh, against Boston, right? Uh, in, in his last start, I said, you know, I don't want to need to play Boston as chalk against Dane Dunning, and he got blitzed. You know, what yep. I mean? so, yep. so uh, I'll say it again. I have Toronto, and he said they're in my list. They're sixth. I don't really want to attack teams uh, attack Dane Dunning too much, but we'll see what happens. And everything else, uh, I really don't have much of an interest in. Yeah, um, I didn't, by the way, weigh in on Peralta before. I do have Peralta as one of, I'm sorry, Montez, not Peralta. Oh, okay. Um, I do have Montez as one of my guys, but I don't I don't feel like I'm going overly one way or the other. I'm sort of iffy on him still. And in this game, um, I, I I think that it's interesting. And it's funny because it, we all, everybody talks as if, as if Stripling sucks every time he pitches. And now Vegas is telling you, hey, look, this guy doesn't suck. And I keep telling, trying to tell everybody the same thing. It's a 3.6 run total here. This is a, an interesting spot. I don't want, I don't think we should want to want to play him at 8200. But I just I think it's interesting how narratives work around people. And now that he's had, you know, four good starts in a row, everybody feels really com comfortable with, you know, putting a 3.6 run total when it's been like a it was like a five run total for, against him before that. I mean, it was really weird every game. 
Um, having said all of that, this is not a game that I'm overly excited about, but it sort of suits into fits in like a lot of others like that. So yes, an ignored offense with this much power uh, as, as the Blue Jays have is probably something I'm going to consider tonight. And, you know, four home runs the last three games for Bichette. Um, I mentioned he's a very streaky hitter. They're very expensive, but I, I could certainly see getting to some Toronto bats, probably not a stack, but, uh, and, and I could always see Corey Seager as a one-off that's, uh, against his former teammate in LA, uh, Ross Stripling. You know, you mentioned Ross Stripling. So we, we gotta, we gotta start building a portfolio of these, 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 this Bobby portfolio of pitchers. They're not as bad as people think. So it reminds me, I forgot to give you credit for something, not even credit or whatever it is. So the other day, the, um, who does Lauer play for? I forget Milwaukee. Yeah, uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. Right. So, so, so he was, uh, he was going in Colorado, and 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 we were talking about the game, and you, I, I don't think you were playing on the slate. It was like an afternoon, so I don't think you played it, or you were going to play it, or whatever it is. And I was making a case for, um, or maybe you did, and I was, I was making a case sort of for Lauer. I'm mean, playing a little bit of Lauer, whatever it is, and you were you were starting to recommend something, something, and then we just kind of got sidetracked, dude. How good is Freeland? From the from the Rockies, I'm telling he's you, he did so much. I know he was he was he was it was like awesome. I mean, he's sick. Milwaukee yeah. was 100 percent. He basically struck him out like from six. He basically gave him no no runs in, in six innings and like 17 fantasy points, like it was nothing or something like that. Yeah. So, um. So yeah, we got we got to build a whole freaking roster of like the Striplings and the Kyle Freelings and the was it Suarez? Like some of these other guys, like the Alexanders. Yeah. I forget, I forget which Alexander, which I forget which one it was, but there was one Tyler that that was good. That, I, Anyway, um, let's uh, let's move on. I guess. Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about this next one because so Lodolo is no. I I got Cleveland, Minnesota. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got looked at the wrong game. Okay. But oh, we'll talk about Lodolo in a little bit. But yeah, I think this game is in real danger of not playing. Oh, thank God. Should it play, (laughs) I'm going to have to make a disgusting thing. Consider doing a disgusting thing that I don't want to do. Oh no, Al Al Bundy, huh? Do you know? You know what? Yeah, you know what happens. You know what that means. It's 58 degrees. Um, it's if you get you get that kind of a weather boost at 62. I'm just thinking about it. Okay, I'm not like saying I'm guaranteeing I'm going to do it. 60 degrees, 58 degrees, 6200. Um, I'm just sort of open to the idea of at least looking at him as a, lo- a lot of guys. It's probably the absolute wrong thing to do. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I, this game is is pretty cross offish for me, whether it plays or not. Uh, with the with the with the weather, I think that I'll just ignore it. Um, I don't think I want to play Quantrill here either. So I think it's just this, this game is just a cross off for me with with it being this ugly. But I certainly wouldn't mind if it does play. If you wanted to play Jose Ramirez or or Josh Naylor for power upside, but I, I think I'm just going to avoid it. Yeah, I have zero this game. Uh, thank okay. God. But you got to remind me. I got to tell you the uh, my the Al, my Al Bundy story. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. I actually want to hear this. So, all right. Yeah. Now you'll, you'll, you'll like this in, ter- in terms of other stuff nice. we've been talking about. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got the uh, Lodolo and Alexander here. Okay, no, so you, as much as you want to. Oh my talk God. I keep jumping game, to that game. I mean, we, we got, we got, we, I, we're going to be, we're going to be all, we're going to be hundred percent Lodolo in a minute, but we got to, <laughs> we got to deal with the, uh, with McCullers first. So we have uh, Houston against the angels. Um, oh, it's all these. Cause they're all five ten. That's I keep getting mixed. I've, up. I've got, I've got McCullers tied for the best play today. Um, so that's, that's, that's where I have him. But again, as you mentioned, pitching is very, uh, is very, very even. So the best for me is very, I mean, like this much, but just to let, you know, I do have him up there on my list and I don't have the hitting for Houston. Why don't I, uh, I don't know. We'll talk, maybe they're only 8k or something, but I'm not, um, yeah, I'm weird. not getting Houston for some reason. So, and, and I am getting McCullers. Well, the, this, the, the, the projections don't like Houston. I do like Houston. Uh, it is, it is a pricing thing. I think is okay. why it's hard to get them in. You've got Altuve okay. at 61. Alvarez has been struggling at 56. Uh, Bregman 54, 52 for Tucker. They're all expensive, but you know what? They're Houston. They, they deserve a little bit of that. Well, I don't know. I don't like to say that, but th- this Houston team deserves whatever credit. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that this is a, this is one of the better stacks on the slate. I have them right behind Philly for right now. Okay. Um, and I have McCullers as a guy. Um, yeah. 
I, I don't have him as a as a as a as a monster play or one of the he's he's fine. If you ask me right now to pick between Montas and him, I would probably pick Montas. There's it's it it always you know it, I do think it's important to look, but I think sometimes it can hurt me and sometimes I overlook at it. Is w- what is their motivation other than to get McCullers back to comfortable? You know, they don't they don't need to ever st- stretch him out to hundred plus pitches. They don't need to do anything with him. They don't have anything to play for. It's a good point. So that's that's always going to – I'm always going to favor the team that's in a race where you think that, that – it's sometimes they go the other way. You know what I mean? You might get more of a leash for a young guy or you're, or less of a leash for a guy in a game where you might want to use the bullpen, if, something like that. But I, I would rather play Montas, I think, than McCullers. I do have McCullers on my list, but I'm not, like, overwhelmingly excited to, to play him. I just think he's a guy for me. How about you for this game? Yeah, that's what I just said. I mean, I, I like I like McCull- I have him rated high, but – but I'm I'm kind of sold by your analysis about that. I mean, like, what is what? I mean, does he really have a ceiling in this spot? Um, yeah, I think there there are other guys. Well, I shouldn't even say that. I mean, there are other guys. I think everybody's fishy on this slate. Now that I think about it. So so McCullers, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put him as kind of a safer play. But even he's not safe. How about that? <laughs> I agree exactly with that. That's exactly how I would put it too. The yeah. thing about McCullers that's that's frustrating as a guy who you know rostering him in DFS is that. You look at his his numbers, his his overall numbers this year. He's got a he, look four starts. He's got an ERA of only two, and yet he's only he barely scraping by at twenty fantasy points. And he's had some good matchups. It's it's I don't know. It just it just doesn't feel overly exciting. He doesn't have that that great K stuff that we sometimes want from these guys. So just he's a guy for me. That's it. Um, all right. Let's what what game you have next year? You have uh, I have two- I have uh, the uh, the the uh, the Hall of Fame matchup of uh, Joey Wentz versus Daniel Lynch. <laughs> Joey Wentz versus Daniel Lynch. Okay. Um, I, I think Daniel Lynch is firmly in play here. <laughs> I really do. Um, uh, you're, you're, I, I don't need to do it. I don't, I'm not, other than maybe stacking up one of these cheap teams, I just think there's enough upside against the team that's third worst in baseball against lefties, both for uh, on base percent. No, sorry, I'm sorry. They're the worst ISO and excuse me, the worst ISO and the third highest strikeout percentage uh, against uh, lefties. Uh, Lynch is never a fun guy to roster. This is a close your eyes and do it. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying he's on my list. And then I'm very okay with uh, uh, the Royals, 85 degrees in KC. Uh, Don't love some of the high pricing at the top, but it it evens out because everybody else is 2K after the top three. So I I definitely have the Royals as a team today. And and even if you don't want to stack them, I think that they're fillers with uh with the rooker taylor dozier prado mix depending on where they end up in the lineup all of those guys are really nice values so i, I kind of like the kc for uh as a stack and and for help along the way how about you lynch got uh got 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 beat up a little bit by detroit in his last start um in detroit five innings pitched five well not that bad five hits um five hits leading to four earned runs what did he give up home runs i, I i'm not sure Kind of hard to give up home runs to the Tigers. Oh yeah, three walks also. Yeah. Um, so I pre- I prefer to not play Daniel Lynch um, if I can avoid it. So I, hopefully I, I don't really want to pay up for the hitting. I rather I rather just play other guys. I think he is showing up. Just I mean just so everybody knows as as one of these one of a, a really really decent value at what I'm showing is low ownership. Like I I have him at like 10, 11 percent ownership. So he does rate to be. It does look visually at least on my sheet to be a good play um hope i don't have to play him but but uh he definitely looks like a decent play i do have the tigers as a value um if you want uh i hopefully again hopefully you don't have to um if i'm gonna play value stuff like that i'd rather just do something like washington (laughs) against um than play detroit guys but just a you know disclosure um and uh i didn't quite get to kc today um, so I guess that's, that'll do it. It's always hard with me, with Detroit, like I, I would like to have a little power, like both Castro's combined are like three home runs and like 200 at bats, um, against, uh, lefties this season. It, it's, it's really hard. So I, 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 but I like the guys who are a little bit above the power for Detroit. If you're, if you're not going to play, uh, Lynch, obviously, but Haas, I think is a, is a great play at 3,200. I like I I don't mind Riley Green and lefty lefty and then Javier Baez has a has a really nice history against lefties although he's you know it's it's hard to be the same this season but he he struggled this year for power against them but I could see I could see getting to some Detroit but I don't think that'll be anything unusual the the best bat, batter in the in the game might be Torkelson I, I it just 
these are really gross lineups. Um, but I, I actually think Detroit ends up getting to be, they're not going to be popular where you have to worry about fading them, but it is weird that Detroit might end up being one of the higher owned teams on a full slate. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, yeah, I'm getting seeing some ownership out of these guys. Yeah. And, and, and you just don't see that hardly anywhere today. So, or anywhere that it's more than Detroit. Um, all right. Now do we finally get to talk about, uh, yes, go talk about Lodolo. Okay. So I love Lodolo stuff. I, I really like this matchup uh, for him. I also think that there is risk with his, with his style. Um, I feel a little better about him than some of these other guys. Cause I feel like if I want to get that 10 strikeout game, I actually think he's the best in line to do it. We've seen what Milwaukee does. They get really aggressive and they don't walk enough, which is, which is what's frustrated us about stacking them so often lately. Um, so I, I like the idea of, of uh, potentially, you know, L- Lodolo right now, I have him pretty high on my list and I don't care. Who, I, I know it's, I know it's the reds and they suck and all that stuff, but, I will be happy to take chances at picking on Jason Alexander. Um, it is a good bullpen behind him, not as good as it was. So you have just a really, really, really cheap Reds team that I that I find a little bit interesting. And I actually think, as, the, as I made the argument for Lodolo, I think you could actually make the argument a little bit for at least some 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 batters from the Milwaukee side. Um, it is, you know, it's a nice hitting park and everything. But for me, mostly it's going to be uh, – a little bit of the, the you know, the Reds for value, uh, Senzel, Friedel, uh, depending on how the line, it really depends on how the lineup comes out. But I, I'm very interested in the, in the, I'm not very interested. I'm interested in the Reds, which feels weird, but I, I am interested in, and nobody seems to ever play Aquino. He, as far as I know, just for some reason in September, decides to start hitting home runs every day. And he's always 2K. <laughs> and he's always 2K. So uh, you, you're going to have a cheap stack no matter how the Reds shake out. So I, I think the Reds are, are definitely viable for value. Um, yeah, I have Lodolo as just kind of a play. Um, but what's good about him, like you said, is that he's 12%, you know, ownership, whatever. Milwaukee still has this um, this kind of air of, like, being good. Um, they're, they're a good team. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Yelich isn't that great against lefties. Um I don't. I don't know. I, again, I, I, the more I'm looking at this pitching, the more, more the more I'm I'm kind of thinking it's fishy. Um, maybe I should just go back to Montas. It it is a little fishy, but I think. But and, and then we're going to get to two good pitchers later that are against two good hitting teams. So I don't know what we're going to do with it. Right. Um. um so we'll put Lolo on the list. Uh, I'm not. I don't quite have it in me to play Cincinnati as much as I always love playing Cincinnati. I'm not getting to them today. Um. I got other terrible teams to play besides them. All right. Um. I remember okay. a big stadium upgrade for Lodolo too. He has to pitch in Cincinnati, which we should almost treat like Coors at this point. The stadium is such a joke. So Milwaukee's not 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 quite on that level. No, nothing's. I mean, Cincinnati is a whole different. Bo- okay. I think. I mean, Cincinnati, Boston, and and the Coors are like significantly showing up to be more and more stronger than everybody else. Remember that little league uh, place they played in Toronto last year? How about the Buffalo? You... Yeah, that was that was yeah. kind of fun there for a minute before everybody caught on to it. Yeah, nobody knew it for like a while. It was, I know. <laughs> it was, it was getting them. I was like, how are we getting these guys? And they're just hitting home runs left and right. All right. Um, so you have Arizona, who's basically been touching up everybody um, all over the place. Um, I got to tell you, we didn't we didn't go over this. You know, uh, I almost won that 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 two fifty the other night, the one that you were kind of doing really well in for a while. Yeah, I was. We were both kind of in the top five or 10 and then you oh, kind of dropped know. off and then I, then I, then I, then I got rolling and I had three swipes at it in the, in the last inning with Arizona. Unfortunately, I had the bread and with my six, seven, eight stack, like if any of them did anything, but freaking they were all lefties against hater. And like, and I'm like great. Okay. That's, that's, uh, and, but the thing is, is that I had Varsho who was like this far away from his third home run in that ninth inning. Um, so anyway, uh, so Arizona, like you, like you warned me, like seven games ago, like these guys have been have been hitting, um, and now you know they're actually in a in a in a <laughs> now they're in Colorado. So I presume they're going to be pretty highly owned. And I don't know what it is. I, I keep I I keep though thinking that Marquez is good. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why. I have, literally have no evidence of that. But every time like he's pitching at home, I'm a little hesitant to go against him. And I don't even know why it is. It just, I mean, it just gets, and there's no nothing on his board that suggests that he's any good. But we just think he is. Maybe he is good. I, I really well, don't he know. He was. He certainly was good. I mean, I think he had a top five Cy Young finish while well, pitching in Colorado a couple of years back. But, but I, I don't know if he's necessarily as good as he was. What he, what he does do 
is he works deep into games. And usually when we have other things in the slate, I mean, he's, you know, look at his, look at his games. He's going six, he goes six or seven innings every time out. Um, sometimes he gets touched up a little bit, but not enough to where you'd want the whole stack of the other team. And it certainly wouldn't have won you any money except for maybe one of those times. Uh, I mean, he's just, he's a, he's a capable big pitcher. Um, uh, for me personally, I, I, I also think that as I, I don't think Zach Davies is anything special, but I don't think he's as bad as everybody else thinks he is either. And a lot of the numbers actually show that. Um, so that's why you don't have a crazy run total in this game. And it's, you know, got wind blowing in and 61 miles, 61 degrees. Boy, it was 91 yesterday. That's 61. Um, I, got, I like Philly better than both of these. 10 guys. blowing in. Yeah, I think I think I think this is a spot where, you know, maybe, you know, Jake McCarthy at 3,700 is, is sort of a value type of play. Corbin Carroll, depending on where he hits for Colorado, for Arizona, I mean, um, not to, to go with the normal guys. All the Colorado guys are, are affordable enough. I kind of like this Michael Toglia guy. Um, but I, again, like you're you're hitting into the wind. And I, I think I would rather take the righties if I had to, to make my picks. But those are just some of the other – I mean, those, those guys aren't righties. But they, uh, they still kind of stood out to me a, a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a low total for Colorado. And there's a reason. It's it's bad, ugly weather. Um, also, they might, you might have some some potential delay risks here which I don't think would be a postponement, but you never know with Colorado with the way that those storms pop up. I mean, I do prefer, I mean, ownership and everything together. I do prefer, I think, the Colorado side a little bit um, uh, to Arizona, but I prefer I prefer Philly to, to both of them. And I do think that I'm, I'm staring at this. I feel Philly against Corbin's all, isn't it, are, isn't that going to be even the chalk? I mean, isn't that going to be higher owned than this team, these teams, especially considering the weather in, in Colorado? Depends on how people look at it. They're going to look at the run lines and and see the pricing. And I think that they're going to play these teams above Philly and those guys. So I do expect Philly to catch on a little bit as the day goes on, but I think these guys are going to be the most popular stacks and uh, probably best to avoid them as full stacks, even though, again, we don't want to worry about ownership too much, but I don't want guys in that, in that kind of weather. I'll take, I'll take a couple guys. I'm just not going to maybe, you know, make a full game stack or play an eight man stack or something like, you know, eight man grouping from this. Um, so, so, th- so this is interesting. So in this next game, so Dodgers against San Diego, you have Corbin threatening in the previous game to maybe be the first guy to have 20 losses. When's the last time the Padres rained down? And man, it's been a while. I don't know. I think it might've <laughs> been one weird one, like not long ago, but I know that it was a long time before that. Um, that is wild. We've got, we've got all these storms coming in, which has sort of affected a lot of things around here. And I keep hearing about it, but meanwhile, it's 150 degrees out every day. Um, I don't know. Uh, this game looks very, very dicey to play. Um, it's by far the highest risk on the slate. It sounds crazy because it's San Diego. Um, they would obviously like to get these in, but they've got the weekend series to make up the game. I, I could see this one potentially being postponed early. Should it not be, uh, I think that it wouldn't change a whole lot for me. I think that I would have a mild interest in the Dodgers as a low-owned stack, as I always do when they're low-owned. but. I, I still believe in Clevenger long term. I, I I know he hasn't been quite right, uh, but yeah, I would just I would just treat this as a as an okay spot uh, for the Dodgers, and that's pretty much all I would have in this game if it was to play. But I I think it's even really questionable to play. When I was in law school in New Orleans, my first year there, um, th- that was it, the, the eve of my criminal law final. Th- there was there was snow, and it was the first snow since the Civil War uh, mm-hmm. in New Orleans. And and they they canceled the criminal law final the next day, you know, 12 hours, you know, 15 hours in advance. They closed the bridges. They closed everything. Um, and the entire city was crippled by one sixteenth of a powdering of snow. OK, it, it was it was the funniest thing ever. Like people were like walking on the streets, like slipping because they've never seen it before. They didn't know how to deal with it, you know, um, and then, as opposed to like when I go, we go to Buffalo to like teach and like when I was teaching the bar exam. Like th- th- there'd be like a 30 inch blizzard. I'd ask, you know, is, is, is the plane delayed? They'd be like, why? You know what I mean? Like, so, so, so right, right, right. I think, I think, I think if there's even a, a, a drop of rain within like a hundred miles of San Diego, they just postpone it. <laughs> and that'll be the end of it. Um, which is kind of a shame because you know what? I don't want to play the Dodgers. Um, I, 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 I listen, I, the whole season I've been saying, I think Clevenger's kind of, Kind of fake, and, and and I like playing the Dodgers against Riley in general, and no one's going to play these teams, uh, play them, and you might get some weather risk or whatever. I think that if the game plays, 
and it looks like it's going to play, and I'll be on top of that one a little bit. I mean, maybe I'll play some teams and wait because I think that's a great play <laughs> to play the Dodgers yeah. in hundred in, 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 in the hundred degree weather if it doesn't rain. Um, so uh, I don't know. That, that that's kind of where I'm at in that. But you know, they'll, they'll probably they'll probably postpone it and issue a issue a uh, natural disaster warning. You know, if there's a if there's a, if there's a drizzle out there. Yeah, and, and one one nice thing about playing the Dodgers these days is you can use Mookie at second base if you do want to do that. I just want to throw that out there, even if you're playing. What a great second base, Mookie. Huh? He's been playing second base. He, they actually moved him to second? He's been playing it. He's been playing a pretty oh, decent God. amount of it. Because they I brought thought they were pulling like a Luka. Like, just like, I, I think they've done it like six times or something. Okay. Like Maybe not that many even. I don't know how many exactly, but it's it, it's just more of a thing. This is a funny one, Sheets. What are we going to do in this game? Because I actually think this is, and that's this is your argument, right? This is the argument yep. for for being able to pivot to a Dodger stack if you wanted to. Yep. Um, I think that, like, look, I have, I actually think Robbie Ray is a really good play here. I also think Atlanta is a really good play. Of course, but of course, you know, and, like this is, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, what, do you think the same thing about the other side too? Yeah, a little bit. Like maybe not. I don't think I have interest in really like like Morton's not a guy I tend to try to pick on. Robbie Ray, we know what happens when he gets off, and 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 he 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 like leaks. He's this guy is just full of fantasy points every which way he gets them. He he. I always will love him on the small slates because you can play him, and then you can play a hitter or two against him because he give up power and speed. Um, as of right now, I do have Robbie Ray. Uh, as a really solid option. And I think Morton's a solid option, but I, I don't think I need to spend for these guys. Um, I also think, and I, and I, and again, like Atlanta does strike out enough to where this is a decent spot, but like, why can't they go out and, and put up 10 runs in this game? Just like they do, you know, against the against guys who are much more consistent pitchers. I'm not gonna say they're better pitchers than Robbie Ray, but they're certainly more consistent guys than him. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in both sides of this and I, I just can't quite figure out what I'm going to do yet. Uh, with regard so, to this. yeah so so for me i i'm kind of it's kind of coming together for me a little bit like i i, I actually have been I, we've been saying this for months now i i really do respect the seattle lineup um I, I think they're good hitters but but the more i'm looking at the slate i i, I kind of want to say morton is the best of all these guys um Ooh. just 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 i don't know why that is um i, I feel as though ray is just going to walk acuna to start off the game Acuna's going to get a stolen base. He's going to have seven whatever fantasy points before anybody knows what's going on. I th I think this is a bad scene for Ray in this game. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I I, I don't think I don't I don't think I want to do him. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of like the idea of playing Atlanta. Um, uh, listen, he, he like you said, he can strike people out. He can mow everybody down, and then then you know and he's gonna he's gonna win the slate. But he's got this vision of all these Atlanta righties up there. I, I don't know. Um, Look, he'll get four. He'll get four on uh, on Olson, I guess. You know, if he, if he finds the plate. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I mean, you got Swanson and, and Riley and and, yeah, this, and and Acuna. You know, this is rough business, man. I don't know if I want to do that. I I kind of want to take my chances on Morton. That Seattle's just not Seattle's not. I think they're good, but they're not like it's not like having all these lefties ready, ready to, ready to crush Morton, you know, like right. the, uh, they have w Winker who's good. Right. But the other guys are mostly righties. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I have this feeling Morton's going to be the best of these guys, but I don't know. I, I probably am not going to play Ray in my big, in my big buy. And I actually would be more inclined to play Atlanta than, than Robbie. Yeah. I'm, I'm going back and forth on everything with this one. So I, I, yeah. I, I can't make, I'll, I'll, I will have that live for you guys at six Eastern, which I'm guessing sheets is out for. Right. I am fairly certain I am. Okay. Well, I don't know, it's, it's 50, 50 actually. Okay. Well then we'll be pleasantly surprised if not. I, I do think that Von Grissom is a, is a standout play at 3,200 in this game. Is he Marquis Grissom's uh, uh, son? I asked this before, I think. I think I'm supposed to know the answer and I don't. Okay. Sorry to say, I do know he's a, that he's a very high level prospect who, when it, when you're a high level prospect in Atlanta, it basically like means you're like the nuts. You know what I mean? Like all of these guys who are supposed to be good, they all end up being great. Swanson, Riley, Acuna, um, Michael Harris, like way too early, by the way, at 20 years old, at 19 earlier in the season. If you're if you're supposed to be good and Atlanta brings you up to their system, that you're gonna be good. Okay, um, so so here I have to get this off my chest because this, okay. I have to make sure to do this. We have we have five, we have a five thousand dollar bonus. I can't do that, but just because in case I, I space out, we have a one thousand dollar bonus here, okay. If if I play Lucas Giolito, I, it's a thousand dollars. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And, and, and I'll say something else. I'm gonna have twenty percent Oakland in my freaking stacks. Okay, 
I'm just, I've just, I've, I've, I, it, there's been, I think there's been other spots where I've had just as much confidence that Gilo is finally going to do something. I'm just not interested. So uh, I'm looking at him and he shows up as like one of the best values for me. So I presume he's going to get owned. Everybody, everybody gets owned against Oakland. I'm just not going to do it. And, and again, this is for, for better or for worse. Listen, the other day I went, I said the same thing about Strider. He won the slate. Uh, yesterday I said the same thing about the early slate with Burns. He won the slate. So I'm going to be wrong on this. I'm just, I'm just not interested. Uh, I, I, I am, I'm good with Giolito personally. Um, I also don't mind the idea of if you're not playing him to, to play some Oakland bat, Seth Brown, Roman Laureano, uh, Dermis Garcia, probably being my favorite of them. Um, all those guys at tremendous power. Like, look, Giolito gives up home, home runs. It's just something he does. He's always going to do that. Um, but I still believe that there's enough, it's a weak enough lineup in Oakland and there's enough straight, there's enough for him to have a, a big outing here and he's so cheap. And even if he doesn't have a huge outing, I don't, I'm not afraid of a ton of pitchers tonight. The only, that's why I keep getting back to it. And, I, and we sort of have a different take on it a little bit, but I keep thinking like Robbie Ray's ceiling should be much higher than everybody else's on this slate. Um, I agree with that. I just, again, maybe I'm just narrativing myself into believing this is just, he's just not going to do it today. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, I, that's I, not I, the way I, you're supposed to look at it, you know, but, but, but uh, no. And, and I made the argument for Atlanta too. Like, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a weird situation. It's, it's a really weird, big slate. We don't have these obvious, obvious situations. Anytime you do see like the Colorado thing, that game, that, that game could have a 12 or, or 12 and a half total. And instead it's 10 because the weather's so, so lousy. Um, so this is tricky. This is this whole slate. Uh, I, I know you don't like betting on teams that just scored a million runs. I, I don't think the White Sox are a bad option to, to potentially put up another one again. Uh, yeah. Certainly cheap enough. Well, keep in mind, I mean, Oakland also, they, they burn like their whole – I mean, they end up pitching Sheldon News in the ninth inning. Yep, yep. Um, and 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 Caprillion is 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 – I would rate him as a slightly below average pitcher who – only problem with stacking against him is he doesn't, doesn't give up quite as much – power as you would you know hope he's he's good at inducing some soft contact but i i think some of these white Sox hitters are in decent spots and i can't remember saying that against any righty but i uh i am definitely open to playing the white Sox either as a stack or pieces uh tonight so i i have the white Sox as my my number three full stack team maybe maybe, maybe we're supposed to play like like lynch lynch and the lodolo or something I, I I just I don't I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, I I I I, mean, I, I think I so I actually have my four priorities as Montas, Lodolo, Giolito, and Ray, with okay. Morton just on the outside looking in. But I honestly that's I, I thought of it because I did need to save a little bit with some of the stacks I like because my favorite stacks are Philadelphia, Houston, and and then the White Sox who are the cheap one. I like the Kansas City for pieces. I like the Reds for value, and then I'm open to pieces of the Arizona Cardinal of the Arizona Colorado game. But I'm not going to be fully stacking it. Anything else that for you that you you ever any stack stuff? Oh, you like the yeah, I don't know. Like I'm staring, I'm, I'm, now I'm staring at Ray's game log. I'm really just like, I'm really just like talking myself in and out of this stuff, like literally on the fly. With him. I don't know. <laughs> he's really tough. You, you get that? You know, just if he has this control, he's 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 awesome. If he doesn't, he's he you're in serious trouble. But even when you're yeah. in serious trouble, he still probably gets you like 20 fantasy points because he gives up four runs, but he strikes out 11 in those games. You know, maybe, 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 maybe you're right. But the good, the good thing is, is that, is that Morton and Ray are in the same game, so so you know that you could always like change your mind as long as you play both of them. As a matter of fact, I mean, if you do play idea. if you do play Giolito, you know, like that, that you have three of the top four pitchers all in late games. You know what I mean? So you could you could change your mind a little later if you feel like it. Right. And it's probably worth noting that if you're going to play a White Sox stack and you're going to play Giolito, may as well do those together. Yeah, um, yep. that's going to give you. A, in general, I always try to remind people of this. And, yeah. and Giolito just hasn't put up that really big game in a while. Um, he hasn't been all that. It's not like he's been terrible for fantasy or anything. He just he just gives if he does, if he could stop giving up home runs, he would be fine. <laughs> um, he he ju- he, ju- he just again like I just can't. He just doesn't. I mean, he looks like a guy that would be okay at like 10% ownership. You know what I mean? Like right, 30, 30 plus percent possibly could be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got you. And I like your, I like your A's. I feel like every, I don't think we've had a show. I think that you're, the A's are your, your diamondbacks from last year. Um, yeah. Well, but, but, but they, they won for me this year. That's the thing. What's and, that? they this, and they were in the game that I won last night. You know yeah, I mean? that's so true. Like, yeah. That's 
All right. Well, uh, that's all I got today. Uh, so I'll be live at six Eastern. We'll hopefully we'll see sheets. Uh, if you don't have a great weekend sheets and good luck. And to I'll see you at 11 one way or the other on Sunday. Yep. And uh, we will be live for football Sunday at 11 Eastern. So good luck to everybody. And we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.